I've had some challenges in the past few years, just like many of you. You see, life can throw us into pits of suffering, where all seems lost, where you feel broken. That's where I found myself. But you know what? I realized something crucial. That suffering, the kind that can shatter you, it can also lead to something beautiful. It can lead to salvation. We all go through pain. But the real question says, what do we do with it? When we suffer, we have two choices. The first path is resentment. You hold on to your pain, your anger, and you let it consume you. That path leads to vengeance, self-harm, and ultimately the harm of others. You see it all around. People who carry bitterness, people who hurt because they've been hurt. But there's another way. The second path and the one I found is forgiveness. And that path leads to grace. Now, I know forgiveness doesn't come easy, especially when the world is beating you down. But that's where Jesus comes in. He is the ultimate example of walking through that gate of forgiveness. On the cross, he suffered terribly beyond what any of us could imagine. He felt out abandonment, pain, everything that we feel in our darkest moments. Yet, despite all of that, he forgave. He looked at the very people causing his suffering and chose compassion over anger. That's powerful. That's grace. Now, I know forgiveness doesn't come easy, especially when the world is beating you down. But that's where Jesus comes in. He is the ultimate example of walking through that gate of forgiveness. On the cross, he suffered terribly beyond what any of us could imagine. He felt that abandonment, pain, everything that we feel in our darkest moments. Yet, despite all of that, he forgave. He looked at the very people causing his suffering and chose compassion over anger. That's powerful. That's grace. And when I think about that, I realize that's what opens the gates of heaven for all of us. It's not just suffering, but what we do with it. So are we going to let it break us down and turn us into people who spread more pain? Or are we going to be like Christ and find the strength to forgive? When we forgive, we experience grace. And that grace is what sets us free. When I look at all of you here today, making the decision to leave behind the darkness, I see people who've chosen the second path. You're not walking through the gate of resentment. No, you've chosen the gate of forgiveness. And by doing so, you're embracing grace. Just like Christ on the cross, you're walking a path that leads not to destruction, but to hope, to healing, and ultimately to salvation. You're God's voice when you choose to rise above, to forgive, and to help others do the same. Every time you make that choice, you're embodying Christ's love. You are, in every sense, the hands and heart of God, offering the world a glimpse of what true grace looks like. Brothers and sisters, we saw this online, and it is a great lesson for all of us who love Christ. Many people have pushed this to the background, and it's no longer important in our community, but these are crucial topics we need to discuss. You can't move forward in life when so much is holding you back. What I mean is, you can't go far while carrying a heavy load, which we call unforgiveness. To avoid this, you need what we call the armor of God. And you must trust in God with all your heart and believe in His timing. Only then can you leave the past behind because there is a greater purpose and a higher calling waiting for you. But if you choose to carry that old spirit of resentment, it will hold you back. It will pull you away from God's salvation and glory, leading to a life where you feel unsatisfied. There is a difference between earthly satisfaction and the heavenly satisfaction that the Holy Spirit provides. You may have things in this world, but without the Spirit to give you peace, you won't go far. The Bible says, My peace I give to you. There is a peace that only comes from God. No matter what you have in this world, if He has not poured that peace into your heart, you are not complete. That's why many rich, influential, and successful people often complain that they are not okay. They may have a lot, but they still feel something is missing. They chase after everything, thinking that if they get it, they will be happy. But the truth is, no matter what they do or how hard they try, they will never find true peace without God. Only the Spirit of God can fill that emptiness in a person's heart. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light cannot exist together. When you invite the light into your life, it pushes out the darkness. Once that happens, your eyes will be opened and you will feel relief. That's why people who accept Christ often feel such joy. 
It's like a refreshing feeling as if they are being poured a cup of cold water. The spirit drives away the darkness and brings in the light, making you feel happy and complete. And truly you are. Matthew 6 verse 14 to 15 is one of those passages in the Bible that commands attention. When Jesus spoke these words, he wasn't just giving a simple instruction. He was laying down a divine principle, peace, and a fresh start in your walk with God. But my brothers and sisters, this isn't just a feel-good moment. This is a serious command that challenges the very core of who we are. The truth is, forgiveness is not easy. But let me tell you, it is absolutely necessary. The scripture reads, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Let's break this down together. Jesus is saying something profound here. He's telling us that our ability to forgive is directly connected to God's forgiveness of us. This is powerful. It means that forgiveness isn't just something that happens between you and another person. It's deeply spiritual. It's a divine transaction that impacts your relationship with God. Too often, we treat forgiveness as optional. We think, if they apologize, then I'll forgive them. Or, once I've healed, I'll think about forgiving. But let's be clear. Forgiveness is not a suggestion from God. It is a command. Jesus didn't say, if you feel like it, forgive. He said, if you forgive others, your Father will forgive you. That means forgiveness is not based on how you feel. It's not about whether you think they deserve it. It's about obedience to God. Let me tell you something. Obedience precedes blessing. We all want the blessings of God. We want peace. We want healing. We want breakthrough. But none of these things will flow freely in our lives if we harbor unforgiveness. When you forgive, you're not just letting someone else off the hook. You're releasing yourself from the chains that bind you. You're unlocking the door for God's blessings to flow into your life. I've heard it said, holding on to unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. When you refuse to forgive, the only person you're really hurting is yourself. Some of us have been carrying the weight of unforgiveness for years. We smile on the outside, but inside we're bitter. We're angry, we're still hurting. But I've got good news for you today. Forgiveness is the key to your freedom. When Jesus said that our Heavenly Father would forgive us if we forgive others, He was giving us a glimpse of how powerful forgiveness is. You see, when you hold on to grudges, you're blocking the flow of God's grace in your life. It's like trying to drink from a fountain, but the water is clogged up. You can't receive the full measure of God's forgiveness if you're holding on to bitterness because it releases you from the prison of resentment. It allows you to let go of the anger, the hurt, the pain that's been holding you back. And let me tell you something. When you let go of what they did to you, you're making room for what God wants to do for you. I don't miss that. You can't carry both the weight of unforgiveness and the blessings God has for you. Something has to go. And today I'm encouraging you to let go of unforgiveness so that you can receive the fullness of God's grace. When we talk about forgiveness, we're talking about the very nature of God. The Bible says in Psalm 103 verse 12 that God removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. Think about that for a second. He doesn't hold our sins against us, even when we mess up time and time again. God is a forgiving God. And he calls us to reflect that same grace to others. Now I know what you're thinking. In your mind you will be like, hey, you don't know what they did to me. And you're right, I don't. But here's what I do know. No matter how deep the wound, no matter how great the offense, God's grace is greater. If he can forgive us for all the ways we've fallen short, for all the mistakes we've made, how much more should we be willing to extend that grace to others? Forgiveness reflects the heart of God because it shows the world what unconditional love looks like. It's easy to love people who love you back, but real love, God's kind of love, loves even when it hurts. Forgiveness isn't saying that what they did was okay. 
It's not excusing the offense. It's saying, I choose to let go of my right to be angry. I choose to release this person into God's hands. Finally, let's not forget the second part of that verse. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is a sobering reminder that our vertical relationship with God is affected by our horizontal relationships with others. When we refuse to forgive, we put a barrier between ourselves and God. It's not that God doesn't want to forgive us. It's that our hearts are not in the right place to receive His forgiveness. God's forgiveness is always available to us, but we can't truly experience it if we're holding on to unforgiveness. Imagine trying to catch rain in a cup, but the cup is upside down. The rain is falling, but the cup can't receive it. In the same way, when we hold on to unforgiveness, we're closing ourselves off from receiving God's grace. But when we forgive, we're turning that cup right side up, and we can finally receive the fullness of God's forgiveness. Forgiveness is not just about releasing the other person. It's about restoring your relationship with God. It's about saying, Lord, I trust you enough to let go of this hurt. I trust you enough to believe that you will handle this situation and you will heal my heart. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. These were some of his last words before he died. Imagine an innocent man, one who had done no wrong, was put to death for no reason. He was punished, beaten, and mocked, all for the sins of humanity. Jesus did nothing wrong, but he was treated so badly. He was flogged, made to carry a heavy cross, and was stripped of his clothes. He endured all this pain and shame to save us from our sins. Even though Jesus went through so much suffering, he didn't hold a grudge against the people who hurt him. Instead, he forgave them. He didn't just forgive them, but through his sacrifice, he opened the way for us to reconnect with God the Father. Because of Jesus, the broken relationship between humanity and God was restored. Jesus became like a bridge, connecting us to God once again. Through him, we can receive forgiveness for our sins, and through him, we are given eternal life. But here's something amazing, something that surprises many people. Jesus didn't just stop at forgiving us. He gave us something more, something that we didn't deserve a powerful gift. Even after all that was done to him, he still chose to bless us with his name. He gave us the right to use his name. The name of Jesus carries incredible power and authority. Whenever we call on his name, even the forces of evil must bow. Every power that tries to fight against us must surrender when we call on the name of Jesus. But Jesus didn't just give us his name so we could use it for ourselves. He wants us to follow his example. He wants us to live the way he lived. This means forgiving others, just as he forgave those who crucified him. Life can sometimes be very hard. People might hurt you, and situations may go against you. But Jesus showed us that forgiveness is the way to overcome these challenges. When we forgive, we don't just let go of the pain. We open the door to eternal life for others, just as Jesus did. Forgiveness can be like a bridge that leads to peace, healing, and salvation. Forgiving someone is like giving them a precious gift. Just as Jesus gave us his name, we give others the gift of grace when we choose to forgive. But what happens if we don't forgive? What if we choose to hold on to grudges, anger, and bitterness? If we carry these heavy burdens on our hearts, they will weigh us down. We won't be able to move forward in life, and we certainly won't be able to fulfill the purpose that God has called us to. God has chosen you for something great. You may not fully understand it yet, but He has a special plan for your life. However, to walk in that calling, you need to let go of the things that are holding you back. If you carry unforgiveness in your heart, it will be like carrying a heavy weight on your shoulders. You won't be able to move freely and you will miss out on the blessings God has for you. So how do we forgive? Sometimes it's hard. When people hurt us deeply, forgiveness may feel impossible. 
But when we look at Jesus, we see that he forgave even the people who put him to death. If Jesus could forgive those who wronged him so greatly, we can find the strength to forgive those who have hurt us too. It doesn't mean that what they did was okay. It doesn't mean we have to forget the pain, but forgiveness is about letting go of the desire for revenge and choosing to walk in love instead. When we forgive, we are set free. We open the door to healing, not only for ourselves, but also for the person who hurt us. Just as Jesus opened the door for us to be forgiven and receive eternal life, we can extend that same grace to forgiveness is a gift that brings healing to broken relationships. It's a gift that can restore peace and harmony where there was once conflict. But forgiveness is also a command. Jesus told us that we must forgive others if we want to be forgiven by God. In the Lord's Prayer, we say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This means that the way we forgive others is connected to how God forgives us. If we refuse to forgive, we are shutting the door on the forgiveness we need from God. Think about your own life for a moment. Are there people who have hurt you? Are there situations where you are holding on to bitterness, anger, or resentment? If so, ask God to help you forgive. It may not happen all at once, but with God's help, you can release the hurt and find the freedom that comes from forgiveness. Jesus didn't carry grudges, and he didn't let bitterness take root in his heart. He chose love, mercy, and grace, even in the face of great suffering. He calls us to do the same. It's not always easy, but it is the way to true peace and joy. So remember, when you forgive, you are not just letting go of hurt. You are giving a precious gift, just as Jesus gave you the gift of his name. And with that gift comes power to overcome evil, power to heal, and power to live the life God has called you to live. Are you ready to forgive and walk in the freedom that Jesus has given you? Are you ready to let go of the burdens that have been weighing you down and live the life of peace and purpose that God has planned for you? If so, ask God for the strength to forgive and watch as he works wonders in your life. Brothers and sisters, let us pray now. We come before you today with hearts filled with gratitude and awe for who you are. Thank you for your unwavering love and mercy that surrounds us every day. You are our creator, our sustainer and our redeemer, and we are truly blessed to call you our Father. We thank you for the beauty of creation, for the warmth of the sun, and for the comfort of a gentle breeze. Thank you for the gift of life and the opportunities that each day brings. Every moment is a treasure, and we are grateful for the chance to experience your goodness in our lives. Lord, we recognize that it is in your presence that we find true peace and joy. You know our hearts, our struggles, and the burdens we carry. We often try to navigate life on our own, but we realize that apart from you, we can do nothing. Thank you for being our refuge in times of trouble, our strength when we are weak, and our hope when we feel lost. Your faithfulness is unfailing, and we are thankful for the countless ways you have shown us your love. As we come to you now, we acknowledge the challenges we face in the area of forgiveness. It can be so difficult to forgive those who have hurt us, and we often find ourselves holding on to anger, resentment, and pain. Lord, we confess that these feelings can weigh us down and prevent us from experiencing the fullness of life that you desire for us. We ask for your divine assistance in this matter. Please, Father, soften our hearts. Help us to see others through your eyes, to understand that everyone is flawed and in need of your grace. Teach us to reflect on the times we have fallen short and the grace you have so freely given us. Remind us of the immense sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for our sins and how, through his suffering, he demonstrated the ultimate act of forgiveness. May that example inspire us to extend the same grace to others. Lord, we ask for the strength to forgive, even when it feels impossible. Help us to let go of the hurt and pain we have been holding on to. Remove the bitterness that lingers in our hearts and replace it with your love and compassion. 
Help us to remember that forgiveness is not just for the one who wronged us, but it is a gift we give ourselves an act of liberation that brings healing to our soul. As we embark on this journey of forgiveness, we ask for your guidance and wisdom. Show us the steps we need to take. Help us to communicate openly and honestly with those we need to forgive, whether it's through words or in our hearts. Grant us the courage to face our emotions and the grace to let go of the past. May your Holy Spirit fill us with peace as we release the burdens of anger and resentment. Help us to be patient with ourselves as we work through our feelings. Let your light shine through us so that we may be vessels of your love and forgiveness to those around us. Help us to remember that forgiveness is a process and with each step we take, we draw closer to you. We also pray for those who have wronged us, that they may come to know your love and grace in their own lives. May they find healing and restoration in you just as we seek it for ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. We trust in your perfect timing and your unfailing love. We ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please comment. Amen. And also comment. Lord, give me a forgiven heart. Thank you for watching until the end. We hope you felt blessed by what you experienced. If this is your first time coming across our channel, we warmly invite you to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. This way, you won't miss any of the inspiring videos that God has in store for you. Please also take a moment to like this video as it helps to reach more people. By subscribing and engaging with our content, you play a vital role in sharing God's blessings with others. Always remember this, you are genuinely love. Thank you for being part of our community.